What if I told you that the blood flowing through your veins right now might hold secrets that could save lives, reveal ancient mysteries, or even suggest something far more terrifying about human origins? Today, we're diving deep into the chilling world of type O blood, specifically the stark and often disturbing differences between O positive and O negative. What you're about to discover will change how you think about the red liquid that keeps you alive. Before we descend into the darker mysteries, let's understand what makes these two blood types so fundamentally different, yet so eerily connected. Both O positive and O negative blood lack the A and B antigens that define other blood types, making them part of the same family. But there's one crucial difference that separates them like night and day, the presence or absence of the Rh factor, a protein that sits on the surface of red blood cells like a molecular signature. This single protein difference creates a chasm so vast that it can mean the difference between life and death, between salvation and destruction. Picture this, you're rushed to the emergency room after a horrific car accident. Your body is broken, blood pouring from multiple wounds and you're minutes away from death. The doctors are frantically trying to save you, but there's one crucial problem. They don't know your blood type. In this moment of pure terror, there's only one type of blood that can save anyone, regardless of who they are or where they come from. That blood belongs to the O negative donors, the universal lifesavers. But here's where it gets truly unsettling. Only 7% of the human population carries this miraculous blood type. Let's start with the numbers that should terrify every hospital administrator on the planet. O negative blood makes up just 7% of the population, yet it's the most desperately needed blood type in existence. When trauma victims arrive at emergency rooms with unknown blood types, O negative is the only safe option. A single car accident victim can require up to 100 units of O negative blood. Think about that for a moment. One person could drain the entire O negative supply of a small hospital. This is why O negative blood is always the first to run out during shortages, leaving hospitals in a state of panic. But O positive blood tells a different story entirely. 38% of the population carries O positive blood, making it the most common blood type on earth. Over 80% of people can safely receive O positive blood, which is why it's transfused more than any other blood type. However, here's the disturbing part. While O positive can save most people, it can also kill those with negative blood types. The RH factor, that tiny protein that makes blood positive or negative, becomes a weapon when introduced to the wrong recipient. Think of the RH factor as a molecular key that either fits or doesn't fit into the lock of your immune system. When O positive blood, carrying this RH protein, enters the bloodstream of someone with O negative blood, their immune system doesn't recognize this foreign protein. It treats it as an invader, launching a full-scale attack that can result in hemolytic reactions, a terrifying process where the body literally destroys the transfused blood cells, potentially causing kidney failure, shock, and death. This is why O-positive donors, despite their abundance, can only help those who share their arch-positive status. The compatibility matrix between these two blood types reveals a disturbing asymmetry. O-negative individuals are the ultimate givers but the most restricted receivers. They can donate to anyone but can only receive from their own kind. O-positive individuals, while more common, exist in a middle ground where they can give to most people but cannot help those who need it most. The RH negative population. It's a biological hierarchy that seems almost designed to create scarcity and desperation. Now, let's venture into territory that will make your skin crawl. There are theories, supported by some researchers and dismissed by others, that suggest O negative blood might not be entirely human in origin. The RH factor gets its name from the rhesus monkey, where it was first discovered. But here's the chilling part. People with RH negative blood don't have this monkey protein. Some theorists argue that this absence suggests a different evolutionary path, or worse, a non-terrestrial origin. The alien theory surrounding RH negative blood is both fascinating and terrifying. Proponents argue that the lack of the RH factor indicates that these individuals descended from extraterrestrial beings who either interbred with humans or genetically engineered our species. Ancient texts speak of the Nephilim, the offspring of angels and humans, who were said to possess unusual characteristics. Could RH negative blood be the genetic signature of these biblical hybrids? Even more disturbing are the alleged physical and mental characteristics associated with RH-negative individuals. 
They reportedly have higher than average IQs, lower body temperatures, higher blood pressure, and an unusual sensitivity to sunlight. Many claim to have red or reddish hair, extra vertebrae, and heightened intuitive abilities. Some even report frequent encounters with unexplained phenomena or extraterrestrial experiences. While science hasn't definitively proven these connections, the patterns are too consistent to ignore completely. The pregnancy complications associated with RH negative blood read like a medical horror story. When an RH negative mother carries an RH positive baby, her immune system treats the fetus as a foreign invader. Her body begins producing antibodies that attack the baby's blood cells, potentially causing severe anemia, brain damage, or death. This condition, called RH incompatibility, requires constant medical monitoring and intervention. It's as if nature itself is rejecting the mixing of these two blood types, similar to how hybrid animals like mules and ligers are often sterile or suffer from genetic incompatibilities. The medical mysteries don't end there. People with type O blood, both positive and negative, face unique health challenges that set them apart from other blood types. They're more susceptible to stomach ulcers, possibly due to their inability to secrete certain protective substances in their saliva and stomach lining. They're also more attractive to mosquitoes, making them walking targets for disease-carrying insects. Research has shown that type O individuals have higher rates of Achilles tendon injuries and may be more prone to thyroid disorders. However, type O blood also comes with some surprising advantages that seem almost supernatural. People with type O blood have significantly lower risks of heart disease, stroke, and blood clots. They tend to live longer than people with other blood types, and recent studies suggest they may have better outcomes when infected with COVID-19. It's as if their blood provides a natural shield against some of humanity's deadliest killers. The ancient origins of type O blood add another layer of mystery to this already complex puzzle. Scientists believe type O blood is approximately 5 million years old, making it potentially the original human blood type. Some researchers theorize that all humans once had type O blood, and that AB and AB types developed later as mutations or adaptations to different environments and diseases. This would make type O the purest form of human blood, carrying genetic information from our earliest ancestors. Archaeological evidence supports some truly bizarre connections. The elongated Paracas skulls found in South America, which have sparked countless debates about ancient alien visitation, were discovered to have red hair, a trait associated with rage negative blood. The gene for red hair originates in the Middle East and Europe. Yet these skulls were found in a region where such hair color is completely foreign. Could this be evidence of ancient genetic manipulation or interbreeding with non-human entities? The distribution of O-negative blood across different populations reveals disturbing patterns. It's most common in Caucasians at 8%, drops to 4% in Africans and Hispanics, and plummets to just 1% in Asians. Some isolated populations like certain Native American tribes have nearly 100% type O blood. The Navajo people of Arizona show a 99% prevalence of type O blood, suggesting either extreme genetic isolation or a common ancestral origin that differs from other human populations. In emergency medicine, the differences between O-positive and O-negative blood can mean the difference between life and death. O-negative blood can be given to anyone in a crisis, earning it the title universal donor. But this universality comes with a terrifying price. O-negative individuals can only receive O-negative blood. If they need a transfusion and O-negative blood isn't available, they face certain death. It's a cruel irony that those who can save everyone are the most vulnerable when they need saving themselves. The emergency room protocols surrounding these blood types reveal the true horror of this biological lottery. When an O-negative patient arrives unconscious and bleeding, medical staff face a race against time that's more desperate than with any other blood type. They cannot use the abundant O-positive blood sitting in their refrigerators. It would kill the patient faster than the original injury. They must locate the precious O-negative units, often calling other hospitals, blood banks, and even emergency donors. Minutes tick by as the patient's life hangs in the balance, all because of a single missing protein. O-positive blood, while more common, carries its own set of medical mysteries. In major trauma situations with massive blood loss, many hospitals will use O-positive blood even when the patient's blood type is unknown. The risk of reaction is considered acceptable when weighed against certain death from blood loss. But this decision essentially gambles with the patient's life. 
If they happen to be RH negative, the transfusion could trigger a deadly immune response. It's a calculated risk that emergency physicians make dozens of times each day, playing Russian roulette with blood compatibility. The psychological profiles associated with different blood types, while not scientifically proven, reveal interesting patterns. Type O individuals are often described as natural leaders, confident, and ambitious. They're said to be outgoing and optimistic, with a strong drive to succeed, but they can also be aggressive, arrogant, and prone to jealousy. Some cultures, particularly in Japan, take blood type personality so seriously that it affects hiring decisions and relationship compatibility. Recent research has uncovered even more disturbing connections between blood type and disease susceptibility. Type O individuals show increased resistance to malaria, cholera, and plague, diseases that have shaped human history. This resistance suggests that type O blood may have evolved as a survival mechanism against ancient pandemics, but this same blood type shows increased vulnerability to certain bacterial infections, particularly E. coli O157, which caused a devastating outbreak in Scotland, where 87% of victims had type O blood. The storage and preservation of O-negative blood presents unique challenges that highlight its precious nature. With a shelf life of only 42 days, hospitals must constantly replenish their O-negative supplies. The demand is so high and the donor pool so small that blood banks operate in a state of perpetual crisis. During natural disasters, terrorist attacks, or mass casualty events, O-negative blood becomes more valuable than gold. The future implications of these blood type differences are both promising and terrifying. As genetic engineering advances, scientists may be able to modify blood types or create universal blood substitutes. But this technology also raises ethical questions about genetic discrimination and the potential for creating biological weapons targeted at specific blood types. If certain blood types truly have non-human origins, what does this mean for the future of human evolution? The genetic mechanisms behind the O-positive and O-negative distinction reveal disturbing truths about human biology. The RHD gene, responsible for producing the RH factor, can be completely deleted or silenced in RH-negative individuals. This isn't a simple mutation, it's a wholesale absence of genetic information that should be present in all humans. Some geneticists describe it as if a crucial page has been torn from the human genetic manual, leaving behind a gap that science cannot fully explain. Recent advances in CRISPR gene editing technology have made it theoretically possible to convert O-negative blood to O-positive, or vice versa. But early experiments have revealed unexpected complications. When researchers attempted to add the RHD gene to RH-negative blood cells in laboratory settings, the cells often became unstable or died entirely. It's as if the absence of the RH factor isn't just a missing component, but a fundamental architectural difference that cannot be easily corrected. This has led some scientists to speculate that RH-negative blood represents a completely different evolutionary branch of humanity. The implications for blood banking and transfusion medicine are staggering. If we could successfully convert abundant O-positive blood into the desperately needed O-negative type, we could solve the global blood shortage crisis overnight. But the technical challenges suggest that the differences between these blood types run far deeper than anyone previously imagined. The failure of these conversion attempts has only deepened the mystery surrounding the true nature of RH-negative blood. The truth about O-positive and O-negative blood types reveals a complex web of medical mysteries, ancient secrets, and potentially extraterrestrial connections. Whether you carry the common O-positive blood or the rare and mysterious O-negative type, your blood holds secrets that science is only beginning to understand. The next time you see your blood, remember that you're looking at a liquid that connects you to ancient civilizations, alien theories, and medical miracles that continue to baffle researchers worldwide. In a world where 7% of the population carries blood that can save anyone but can only be saved by their own kind, and where 38% carry blood that's desperately needed but potentially deadly to others, we're reminded that even our most basic biological functions hide terrifying complexities. The red liquid flowing through your veins isn't just keeping you alive, it's carrying the genetic echoes of our mysterious past and the key to our uncertain future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more amazing facts. See you in the next video.